What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to episode two of our Kenshi uh, little scenario that we got going on here. Um, funny story, I saved over the first tutorial uh, save game that we were doing, which not a big deal as we didn't have a lot going on. Um, and I actually kind of wanted to skip ahead to this and it'll be more effective uh, for you guys to watch this one as I wouldn't have to take the time to start all over and then you guys would essentially have to watch me mine and get money for, you know, a good four hours before we could do anything fun. So hopping right into it, uh, you can see that I have recruited some other people uh, in my main party is obviously Kenshi, the main character. Um, Bear, which is actually going to be built into my kind of heavy, um, heavy weapons class, high strength type of guy. Uh, he's also very good at laboring and finally I got a kind of like a pack mule looking thing um, from a farm and I got him as a baby and he has now grown into an adult uh, which is pretty cool that's not something I knew that they actually aged and I put a little pack on him um, so he's excellent for making a bunch of weapons and then running into town with him to sell those weapons. So it's a pretty good setup. Um, also, I built these shacks with the mods that I had downloaded, which I have turned off right now. Um, I, I, the only reason I like that mod, the cannibal one, is because this fits in a lot more than, let's say, you know, a shack if we were just living out in the middle of nowhere. So I like that. Um, and you get these poles where you can put out people. Uh, which I'm not going to mess with her obviously now because I have that mod off. So I'm going to set her free. She's free to run away and do whatever she wants. So starting off, uh, just trying to leave off where you guys kind of understand what's going on. So we started off mining in a town not far from here. Down this road here. And then selling it to that town over and over and over again. Until... We bought enough, or we made enough, that is. I think my game just crashed. Oh, no, autosave. Uh, made enough to kind of start to venture out on our own. So I started by making a shack. Um, and that's in the build menu. So if you go to build stuff, you don't have access to all these because I've obviously done some research. But buildings, you'll have small shack and storm house, I believe, right off the bat. Get the building materials. You can buy that straight from the... Uh, trader um of like the picture of the crescent wrench or whatever that's the one that they it's the building trader or whatever they build one of those um and then you would go to tech and build a research bench which we've done inside of here and this was my f this was my first building right here uh, all all this other stuff in here uh is after the fact so i had the research bench in this corner and then I would research, um, and then we would unlock stuff. So on the, on the subject of research, that's something that's changed up quite a bit. Uh, your research bench, in, in the older time frame, you'd actually just be able to send someone there and start researching stuff in a list, and you would just get it. You know, there was no materials needed, etc. Now you actually have to have materials um, like books for example so um, I actually dismantled my research bench because I need to build a level 2 one so I have nothing right now to show you this but it's the same process um, let's say this was the research bench you can actually click on it and you'll have a, a storage area right here and you'll be able to drag your books into that storage area as that's what's required to um, to start doing research. So you'd go to tech. Let's exit out of here. You go to tech, and then, so bed, for example. Well, we need a research bench level two, and we need one book. So inside of my research bench, I would have had to have drag, uh, dragged one book into the research area. This one needs six, et cetera, ten. So it gets a little crazy. Um, haven't really got into this 
I want to, but it's kind of hard finding books right now as the towns that I go to are not huge into the construction buildings and traders. There's only one. Um, so that's that. Uh, that's how you're going to start off. Uh, as far as getting uh, other people in your in your clan here, it's the same. You go to a bar um, and then recruit those people with the currency, which is cats. Uh, and that's about it. So if you haven't played even the old style ones, there's not much of a tutorial. You'll see some stuff pop up over here on the screen every once in a while. Um, so really how you want to have it set up is I usually have kind of the main guy and I kind of like the role play aspect of it. So I like to think that he is the leader. And then I usually have him accompanied by someone who is kind of the heavy guy. Um, so I made bear here for that. And then I usually have a pack mule. For the laborers, this was actually the first person that I encountered was tuner here. However, I did not know and this is another new thing that you guys should keep in mind. When you come across the factions, let's see if I can find out where those are, factions. Um, the Holy Empire, which is somewhere in here. It's the Holy Nation, you'll see. They do not like non-human things. So every time she would run up there by herself or uh, with a packing mule, they would run up to her and question her and she would have to say something like oh yeah my human master sent me on this mission or blah 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 and eventually they would let her go but I have seen it where they have just outright attacked her uh, without questioning and that's why I have her staying back at base now as a laborer instead and then this is uh, the builder I actually recruited him from a bar uh, the only reason he's a builder is because his laboring and engineering was already high Right when I recruited him, he was kind of expensive. Naga, I think, was just a normal guy that I recruited. So he was a free man, and I just recruited him for 3,000 cats. Slaves. Uh, it's funny about how I got the slaves. There is a mining facility right here of the Holy Nation. And um, as you can read there, they are pretty harsh on their slaves. Well, I just essentially sent Kenshi in one night to their little prison here and lockpicked all of their cells and then took off running this direction. Well, the, the slaves will follow you. And once they get a certain distance away, they will either decide to run off and live their own life or they will decide to join your cause. Well, these three happen to decide to join my cause. As you can see, ex-slave. So they will be an ex-slave for a certain duration of time, and if they're discovered by their owners, they will attack. So um, right now, we only have three hours left. She's been here for quite a while. Farming is another thing you're going to want to do, uh, especially when you're living out in the desert like this. Um, it's really annoying to go get food from town every 10 seconds. So what I've done is... I actually sent Kenshi to steal a bunch of wheat straw uh, because you need wheat straw to build whatever you're building. So like for vegetable farm, you need the green fruit to build it. Wheat farm, you need wheat straw to build it. So what I did was I started with a small one. I only needed 10 wheat straw, so I went and stole 10 wheat straw. And then as you start to get you know output of wheat straw you can actually click a little button down here and upgrade uh, once you've kind of built up your wheat straw and it'll just use what it was already producing so I would always start small and then go large because you're not really missing out on anything um, now this is like the this is the largest farm that I can have now um, so its output is way higher than the small one and then I have the servants gathering water in their downtime and storing it in the storage that's what one of them is doing. So these off to the right are the jobs. You can manage those. So this one, this one's particular job is to 
um, operate the wheat farm and then operate the well. So um, how you do that is you would you would shift hold sh just what it says here hold shift and then right click on that that's going to be your first job and then the well is going to be your second job so you will only work on this if it's workable and then she'll move on to her second task and that's really important that you do um, otherwise you'll get a lot of stagnant people so like if I didn't, if I had her just working this, she would just be standing in this field, you know, 24 hours a day doing nothing while she would literally be watching grass grow, essentially. Um, this servant is actually also operating this wheat farm, but her secondary job is to operate the well. Well, there can only be one person operating the well. So she's gone to her third uh, thing, which is get stone from the stone mine um, well actually her third one is is to refine the stone but there's two people already working on it so then she's just uh, mining and another person is putting the building materials in here and it looks like they are full so we need to start building stuff to get used to or get rid of that or we can throw it on Bogvir here and take him into town and sell it. On this side, same thing. Bear here is um, his first job is to process. His second job is to mine. So if you had him just mine and then do this process, well, what he would do is he would mine until it's full at five and then process one and then mine for five again. You don't want to do that. You want him to process as many as possible and then mine just enough so that he can process it tuner here uh, has a lot of stuff so she's going to haul equipment to the weapon stand after she makes it if she doesn't have to do that she will go and start building weapons uh, and then if she doesn't have any iron to build those weapons she will help bear out mine and process so as you can see it's it's very important that it's set up like that um, it looks like we have some uh, river lizards or whatever they're called river raptors heading in here um they're not going to attack or anything like that but i would like to attack them as they will give us meat i'm gonna get the main party together here and we're gonna attack and i believe a lot of these people will kind of join in once we do so but That's all right. This guy's amazing with this weapon because he literally just takes all of them out in one big swing. It's pretty nice. I don't think anyone was injured. Oh, except for Kenshi right there. Kenshi was barely injured, but he can first aid himself. All right. Um, so... He's all healed up. I think no one else got hurt. Excellent. And you can go through and check that in the bottom left of your screen there. Doesn't look like anyone's hurt. So what we can do is we can actually grab the skin and or any meat that they drop. And maybe these ones don't drop. These ones might not drop meat. The funny thing is, is they will sit there and not be dead. Uh, if you knock them out like how they were. And then the second you take their leather, they just go dead. Which obviously, um, it makes sense. But it's funny because they were just unconscious. And you take a item off of them, leather, and they're gone. You can right click and it'll auto stack over there. Um, oh, back to the um, technology side. If you see, I have some blueprints here. If I had a research bench level two, I could actually just right click and throw these into the research benches uh, storage area. And then we would actually just learn how to do these two things. So if you want to, you can buy these and not have to research at all. It makes it really quick and easy.
In my case, I actually just stole these, but we'll be able to make a cleaver and stuff like that when it's when it's later on. Um, normally, another thing that I read, you'll want to get rid of corpses uh, because they will attract other predators. Um, oh, let's see, and it looks like our servants are working on our. Our things here and I totally forgot that I built this other wheat straw thing so we need to get some people to work on that as well there we go so now she'll do everything she was doing except she'll operate this at the same time same with that one. I have my slaves set to passive so that if someone comes to fight, they're not going to try attacking those people. And likewise, they'll be less likely to be attacked uh, by the enemies because they're not doing anything. I still have my village not open to the public as I don't want people just walking through here yet as a lot of them will be bandits. And um, at the moment, obviously, we can't handle bandits. I don't even have walls up, so... So what I want to do is, you kind of got the basic idea of what I have going on here. The only thing I didn't talk about was my food production, which is essentially right here. So all of the straw flour that they get from, see this wheat straw here, what they'll do is they will come over into the, gran uh, the grain silo and then change wheat straw into straw flour. When that's done, um, they will bring it indoors here. And this is storage for the straw flour. But what they'll do is they'll actually make bread um, with straw flour and water, which we get from the well and obviously the grain silo. Make bread, and then they'll put the bread inside of here. What you can do is you can put food items in this barrel here. And anybody who's hungry will just come grab it, and then you don't actually have to feed them every two seconds. Food, okay, apparently you can't put food in the food items, so you can only put bread in the bread area. I do not know if people will feed themselves. Doesn't look like it. Bear doesn't have food on him either. So that's probably going to be our big run right now, is go get food. I want to show you, um, when we are going to a town, like I said before, Everyone's kind of running at different speed, and that can get annoying. I have it set down here so that they'll run as fast as the slowest one. However, when you first load in or anything like that, you'll have to reset it. So I highlight all the people in my group. I just move over one and then move over back to the two people running. This is if they're running by themselves. This is if they're running as a group. Now you'll see that if I choose the, them to run together, they'll kind of form a little convoy here. So, Rogvir is the slowest runner. I think he's actually maxed out at 60 miles an hour, no matter what. Well, not 60 miles an hour, but 60 run speed. Um, no matter how high I get his athletics, he's just kind of stuck there. We'll see if that changes. But, since the humans are way faster, and I want Bear to be my heavy guy, one way to get strength up is if you have uh, a heavy weight. So what I'll do is I'll actually have him pick up Kenshi and then I'll have them run to the nearest town, which if you look on the map is this bad teeth area. So now you'll see that bear is getting strength 96, 98, 99, 100 now. If we refresh, he'll be 10. That's the easiest way to get their strength up while avoiding con uh, combat. Just like athletics, the easiest way is just to have them run back and forth between towns. Um, it's nice for Bear. Obviously, Kenshi's not getting anything from this. But uh, it's better than nothing. Uh, especially because this guy is eventually going to taunt our enemies and be kind of the tank. So we want him to be you know, formidable. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to run to the food store here. See if we can buy some good stuff for our clan. Doesn't look like they have that much great stuff, but we'll buy it anyway. As we are doing pretty all right uh, on money and stuff like that recently since we've been making a bunch of weapons. Um, we've been doing pretty good with our money. A little boy that got dismembered by skeletons. Sounds legit. We're kind of out of money now. I'm actually going to have them head back to our area. Looks like there's a battle going on out here. Normally I would have them partake in that because it's pretty much free experience because you have a whole load of Holy Nation guys backing you up, but for the sake of this, we just want to get him back. And that's Holy Nation as well. So if I was with Beasts right now, for example, with Tuner, that uh, Shek faction, they might stop us and say, hey, you know, what's going on? You're not, you're not a member of the Holy Empire. You can actually get their clothing and wear it, and they'll kind of leave you alone. Um, that's obviously not the case right now. When we get back, we'll have Bear drop Kenshi. You can actually do this with anybody. If you wanted to, you could just have him run around with a slave all day to get uh, his strength up. I'll have him put him down. Have Bear head in here. Put some food in the food storage area. And ideally, they will go run in there and feed themselves. I would always just keep check, as obviously this game, uh, th there are bugs. So you want to make sure that they are feeding themselves. Usually, I, What I have noticed is they'll only feed themselves if they have a job. So like if he's supposed to be doing something and he's not... Um, They'll go eat, so we'll see what happens here. See where Tuner's at? She has a full thing, and she can't even move any of it. So we're actually going to go sell some of the stuff. As you can see, the sell value is a little low, but we produce in bulk. So we should be able to get a pretty decent thing of cash going here. We really need to build our research bench as well. Alright. Let's bear pick up the other half. That might be enough encumbrance. Yeah, it is. That's plenty of encumbrance for him. So we'll just get him to. Take the goods back to bad teeth there, and you just kind of repeat this process. You'll get cash, you'll be able to uh, kind of recruit more people, and you can just keep doing that, doing that, doing that, um, until eventually you can start just building walls and saving that stuff for other items, so. Um, that's gonna be about it, honestly. I think we went through just about everything else. Unless there's something you guys can call out. Crafting is obviously another thing, but it's really just the make a make kind of a set of jobs for everybody to do. Um, and have them do that. So run back and forth. I like to stay near a city. Maybe I'll come back with another another tutorial once we get to building walls and stuff like that. Um 
and then how you actually trade once your city is open to the public. So that's going to be it for this episode. It's a little long anyway. So I'll get this uh, posted up. Hopefully you guys get some of your questions answered. Um, and if there is anything that I missed that you guys kind of want to go over, I can do like quick little five to 10 minute tutorials uh, dealing with that. Maybe I can do one about sneaking and how that works, uh, etc. So thanks a lot, guys. It's been awesome. I'm glad that we're getting uh, good views and feedback on these videos. Glad I've been helpful to you. Uh, once again, if there's something I missed. Don't be afraid to throw in the comments what it is so that it's simple for me to make a video about it and just answer the question for you. So. I have no problems doing that. So like, subscribe, uh, comment, and we'll see you next time.